Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the brand new OpenXR Toolkit. Where to download it, how to install it, and more importantly, how to use it. So if you think that interests you, then I think you should stay tuned for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Alright, so I know this is a long-awaited video, so let's get right into the OpenXR Toolkit. But first, if you've got Microsoft Flight Simulator open, we need to close the application out. So we're just going to head up here to the top right, exit out of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and we can start with the OpenXR Toolkit. Alright, so down below in the description, I will have all the links you're going to need for the installation of the toolkit. When you click on the link, it's going to bring you up to this web page. Now it's going to give you some brief overview of what the OpenXR toolkit is actually used for. And one of the other things that is really cool over here on the left, you can click on the roadmap and that's going to show you all the different features that are planned to be added in the future. So I think this is a really cool development for Microsoft Flight Simulator and VR. So the first thing that we need to do before we click on any downloads is to uninstall your NIS scaling tool if you have installed that previously. Now once you have uninstalled that, we're going to come right down here to the downloads and click download the latest. When you click on that, you're going to see the download appear in your web browser. Once that does, we can just give that a left click to open that. Now you're going to have a screen populate here that shows Windows protected your PC, but that's okay. We just need to hit the more info button and then run anyway. And now you're going to be prompted here to hit next for the next couple of steps. So we're just going to come down below, hit the next. You can read through this if you like. We're going to hit next again, and then we're going to hit next on the OpenXR toolkit. Now that that has been installed into your PC, you can hit close on that application and we are pretty much done with this website. We can close out of that as well. The first thing you're going to notice on the desktop is you're going to have a new shortcut to the OpenXR Toolkit Companion application. So if you want to left click on that, hit yes. Now it's going to open up the new OpenXR Toolkit Options menu. Now here's where you can go down and either disable the OpenXR Toolkit so it's not used at all. We can also enable safe mode and there's a couple experimental settings if you'd like to tick that. So we're going to leave this on for today so this way I can show you all the different features inside of the OpenXR Toolkit as of February 3rd. 2022. You can also enable screenshots and down here on the bottom, these are our different hotkeys and this is how we're going to navigate through the OpenXR options in VR mode. <laughs> yes, we can operate this in VR mode by the use of any different keys that you would like to use. Currently, as set to default, the control F1, F2, and F3, these are going to be used to scroll through the various options of the OpenXR Toolkit. Below your on-screen menu hotkeys, we can also have an option for the open the log file, and we also have the open screenshots folder. So if you take any screenshots, we can just pop this open, and they should be in that location. I haven't yet tried that, but uh, if you have, leave a note down in the comments section and let us know your results there. Now, right underneath of that, we can either, we have a tab here that we can report any issues to the developer, or we can also check for a newer version. When you click on this, it's gonna open up your web browser so that you can check for any new versions. Now that we've gone through all the different options here on the OpenXR Toolkit, we can now exit out of that as well. Now keep in mind that you do not have to have this running when you are using Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is start up Microsoft Flight Simulator, and then we'll go through all the different options. Now that we have spawned into Microsoft Flight Simulator, I know a lot of people are gonna wanna know, what do I set my Windows Mixed Reality resolution to? So we're gonna go over that right now. For those of you who are using the HP Reverb G2, and are using the Windows Mixed Reality OpenXR Runtime tool, over in the Developer Settings, you wanna go down to Custom Render Scale, make sure that's ticked on, 
and then make sure this says 100% render scale. For those of you who are not using an HP Reverb G2 and are using a Steam headset via Oculus or Valve Index, uh, currently I am using the Valve Index and these are my settings that I'm using in Steam. Okay, so now that we have gone over these particular settings, let's get that off of the screen. So now what we're gonna do is hop in the cockpit and then switch in the VR mode so that I can show you all the different settings. All right, so now that we're in VR, to access the OpenXR Toolkit menu, we just need to hit the Control and F2 keys. Once we do, the menu will populate, and to scroll through the menu, all you need to do is continue pressing the Control and F2. Once we get to an option that we want to change, we can either press the Control and F3 to move the cursor to the right, or we can hit the Control and F1 to move the cursor to the left. So if we highlight Overlay and press Control F3, we can see we have now moved the cursor to the FPS mode and the FPS counter has populated at the top of the screen. Next down on the menu, we have the upscaling mode. This is where you can decide whether you're gonna use NIS for your upscaler or the FSR for the upscaler. Now, as you know, NIS is for the NVIDIA scaling tool. The FSR is the AMD scaling tool. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use the FSR for AMD and NIS for NVIDIA. You can use either upscaling tool that you'd like for any graphics card. So what I recommend to do to figure out which one works best for you is to just turn on the NIS scaler first, exit your VR mode, re-enter VR, and see what type of clarity and quality you're getting on your screens. Then you can switch over to FSR mode and do the same exact thing, exit VR, and then re-enter your VR session. Once you figure out which one works best for you, then I would just go ahead and stick with that. Now, keep in mind that this is gonna vary greatly upon everybody's system. So what works for me may not necessarily work for you. So you have to do what's right for your system and your application. The factor is where we're going to set the level of scaling that we wish to use for the scaling tool. You can go in either direction here. It doesn't really matter. So if you go higher, as you can see, the resolution is going down the higher I go. So again, it really doesn't matter whether you're going up above 100 or below 100, it's still going to lower the scaling factor of the resolution. In any case, what I recommend to do to figure out the optimal factor setting is to just start at about 80%. Now you also wanna make sure that you have turned off any motion smoothing in either Steam or your Windows Mixed Reality because that is also going to change the way your visual quality looks on your screen. So now once you start looking around and seeing what kind of performance you get, if you feel that you could up that, then you just wanna go over here to your factor and then start bumping it up about 5% each time exit your VR session, enter back in, and just seeing for yourself how much lag there is. If you're unsatisfied with the amount of lag that you've got, then you just want to take this factor and back it down some. Exit your VR session, enter back in, and then check for the lag as you're looking around the cockpit. Once you get to your acceptable frame rate, then you can move on to your sharpness setting and now we can start adjusting the sharpness up. Again, what I recommend to do is to start at about 25%. And with this particular setting, you do not have to exit your VR session. So you can adjust this on the fly, check and see how it looks in the cockpit, and then go ahead and adjust again. But anyway, I recommend to start at about 25% and then keep working your way up until you start seeing a little bit of artifacting around your dials or your lettering. Uh, and once that starts happening and it gets a little bit over sharp, that's when you know you've gone a little bit too far and then you just wanna come back to the sharpening factor and then just back that off maybe five or 10% and then you can recheck and, and see how it works for you, see how it looks for you in your headset. 
we're going to move down to the world scale setting. Now the world scale is something that I really didn't think I needed until I used it. What this is going to do is make the cockpit feel like it's a real life-size cockpit when you're sitting in it. For instance, if we were sitting in this particular plane right now and I turn my head to the right, at 100% world scale, it almost felt like the guy would probably be sitting half on my lap. So what this is going to enable you to do is to enlarge the cockpit, so to speak. So when you decrease the percentage here, it is going to make the cockpit look wider. I have settled on about 85% world scale, and that seems to be just about right for me in my headset. Field of view again, I leave at 100% and you can mess with that. And as you can see on the screen, uh, what it's gonna do is change your field of view. The next option that we have down here is the prediction dampening. And for anybody that is using VR, you know how bouncy it can be. Now, when we turn on prediction dampening, what that is gonna do is help with the bouncing factor. So now I'm bouncing the headset around and as you can see, it is not as bad as if I turn this all the way down to zero, it's really, really jumpy. Next down, we have hand tracking. I don't have any hand tracking equipment, so I can't test this. But if you do have hand tracking equipment, there are instructions on the initial web page that can show you how to set up the hand tracking. Next down on the list is font size, and here's where we can change the font size of the menu itself. We go down to menu timeout. This is where it's going to set the timeout counter down here at the bottom, and we can choose either short, medium, or long. Next, we have the menu eye offset, and I recommend not to change this at all. This is going to bring both of your eyes together, so to speak, so you see one image and not a double image of the menu tool. It has nothing to do with the Microsoft Flight Simulator playing behind this menu. This is just for the menu tool itself. And again, I recommend to leave the menu set to default. If you do happen to change it, then all you need to do is come down here to restore and then hit F3, Control F3, and that will restore the defaults. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of every feature of the new XR toolkit. So if you have any questions, please post those down below in the comments section. Thanks everybody for joining us here today on the channel. If you haven't done so already, make sure to go down below and hit that subscribe and take that little bell and smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us get found by viewers like you. Well, to all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.